Hey guys, welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. Today is a really exciting day for our YouTube channel because I'm doing something completely outside of our wheelhouse. You know, I always do uh, stuff about the Germans and uh, especially Walders and Lugers, uh, do some American stuff. But for the first time in our YouTube channel history, I'm gonna do something Japanese. It is outside my wheelhouse. I'm not an expert on Japanese stuff. Uh, so, uh, if you have comments and you want to add to our knowledge, please uh, send us your comments. We'd love it when you like and reply. Just don't call us idiots. We don't like that. But otherwise, uh, let us know. I still think it's important that I show you this Japanese baby Nambu. The reason I decided to do this today was because I made a mistake. I, I, uh, this time, the mistake was in my favor. I was uh, at a local auction and I bought a baby Nambu, and it came in this holster. So I was really proud of it, brought it home, uh, said let's put it on the website. I've had babies before, they sell pretty quickly uh, because they're so popular. Uh, among collectors, the baby Nambu, in the Japanese arena, the Pacific arena, the baby Nambu is the ultimate, cream of the crop. This is the most desirable Japanese weapon that I know of and in my opinion. Okay, the, in your comments will be, I like, I like the machine guns better. This is probably the most popular. It's equivalent to the party leader PPK. So it was, it's, uh, it's kind of like an honor weapon. If you were an officer and you carried one of these, it was a great honor. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the video. So this, this is an important collecting weapon, the baby Nambu. Now, I bought this at the auction. I've, I've sold them before, not real good at it, so I'm always taking a chance. And it came exactly like this. I brought it back, I gave it to our photographer, Randy, took some pictures, and then the guy, Chris, who writes the descriptions, calls me at home and says, hey, did you know that this is an extremely rare holster? He, he, um, he mentioned this holster, I had no idea. Turns out there's less than 20 of these known and it's worth the, the holster alone is worth more than the gun. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, very valuable and uh, saved the company some money because we were able to uh, uh, raise the price. It was worth quite a bit more than what we thought and it sold immediately. And uh, It's actually sold twice immediately. So people obviously are looking for this holster. You're looking at it and say, I don't see anything different. So real quickly, what I'll, I'll let you know is the earliest holster had a hard shell. These are... Um, the, uh, if you know the uh, Type uh, 14, they come with a clamshell flap. This is a clamshell. And this is a hard clamshell. And usually there's uh, KNG uh, writing inside, and this one has that. Uh, looks about the same in the back, but again, hard shell. And after he pointed it out, I realized all the ones I've ever seen are soft shell. This has a softer shell. Um, not the hard clamshell. So these were the earliest ones, and there's, all, there's less than 20 known among collectors in the United States. And I just happened to mistakenly, dumb luck, picked it up, won the lottery, and sometimes it works out that way. Just for those of you who are jealous, most of the time when I make a mistake, it doesn't go that direction. Okay, the baby Nambu, the one that came with that early holster actually has a three-digit code. Um, 672, so this was the 670th, 70th, the 672th uh, one made, and um, there were only about 6,000 of these made at the Tokyo Arsenal. I call those cannonballs, but they're actually, uh, actually they could be cannonballs, but that's the company logo. The Tokyo Arsenal made about 6,000 of these, and the, the patent date was 1902, a lot earlier than most people realize. 1902, and they produced them up till 1928. They actually stopped producing them at the Tokyo Arsenal in 23, and then they made them in the Tokyo Gas and Electric Arsenal. Um, so, um, again, the first 6,000, and then they made another 550 um, Tokyo Gas and Electric. So the Tokyo Gas and Electric are a lot more rare, only 500, about 500 and about 6,000 of these. Still, very rare guns. Now, who did they go to? Um, most of the reading I did, and uh, you can take a look at this book, but a, a book by Darby, he actually wrote two books. Um, it, it indicates that they were, uh, went to the Imperial Academy when the candidates graduated, they were either, either given a gun or given the opportunity to purchase a gun. Again, only about 6,500 of these ever made, so not too many officers got them. 
It does seem to have gone through the Imperial Academy and it's kind of a mystery, lost to history, whether or not they could purchase them or they were giving them. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, these went to officers and they were very desirable and it was a great honor to carry this weapon. Uh, there are a few pictures. Uh, you can find a few pictures of officers during World War II carrying a baby Nambu. I've included um, a screenshot of what, uh, what is in the book in terms of the production numbers and serial numbers. If you're somebody who likes the detail, you can pause and, and uh, feel free to print that out. Otherwise, you can buy the book. They are available on Amazon. Um, so let's talk a little bit about a little more detail. First of all, uh, these came, this is, this, this is the more, more common one. And again, would come in uh, this holster. It's kind of rare to find the straps. That's usually the first thing to go. They, they wear away pretty quickly. Um, and the holster, inside the holster, you can see, oh, actually, there's a little surprise in here. Let's see what it is. If you look down inside the holster, there is a, a little tiny uh, cleaning rod. And these were, these were not like the wartime ones that were blued. These, these are uh, uh, nickeled. So uh, down inside here, you will see that little cleaning rod. And by the way, these cleaning rods can be a couple hundred bucks. This is how rare these things are. So it's kind of cool to be holding one. Uh, they come in seven millimeter, which is obsolete ammo. Let, let me show you uh, one of the rounds that I have. This is the uh, seven millimeter uh, bullet. Again, obsolete. I think Midway made them for a little bit of time. This is actually an original round Jap of Japanese ammo. And uh, they fit r right inside the uh, flap here. I, I have one with um, a full row of original rounds. Uh, and what's, what's interesting about this, first of all, I, I, this is an expensive proposition. These rounds can cost anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks a piece. I've, I've had collectors pay $50 a piece for these rounds, and you never buy just one. So they usually get two or three. So to shoot this gun is a very expensive proposition. I've never shot them, but they are, I'm sure there's YouTube videos of people shooting a baby Nambu. Uh, I don't have that kind of money. Um, so these are original round seven millimeter. If you know the standard Nambu, this is the type 14. And by the way, all of this was the uh, brainchild of General Nambu back in 1902, got the patent on the Papa Nambu and then the baby Nambu and then the type 14. And he also had a type uh, 94. So there's a picture here of General uh, Nambu, uh, pretty uh, tough looking dude wouldn't want to mess with them, but he came up with the original design for the Nambu, pistols, rifles, machine guns. Um, and this would be the standard Nambu. Most of you are familiar with that gun. And the baby, this gives you a size comparison. Uh, this, this shot an eight millimeter round, as opposed to the seven millimeter. So when these were issued, um, again, they were, it's got a nice high polished blue on it. Most of the babies that I've seen, most of the babies that I've sold have tiny pin pricking. Uh, you know, I, I, my eyes are not what they used to be. And so sometimes I have bought these at a gun show and I bring them home and uh, the younger crowd here says, what were you thinking? <laughs> this thing is covered with pitting. And when I get a magnifying glass, I'll take a look at it and I'll see little pin pricks all over the metal. Uh, and that's easy to explain. Uh, the German stuff, you see that, but not nearly as often, unless it's naval, which is the key to this. Uh, Japan is obviously an island nation, and all of their uh, war-type excursions, whether it was Russia or China, or then uh, the entire taking on all of Asia, um, they had to go in ships. And so the naval, uh, and some of these were issued to the Navy, by the way, naval, naval officers. When they went to sea, obviously they would get a, a, a salt air a fine layer of salt air. And even when you wipe it down, it's kind of like when I drive my car to the beach and I, <laughs> I bring it home, it looks, it looks clean, but you wipe your finger on it and it's just got a salt mist across it. You get a salt mist on this and it doesn't take very long until the, the finish starts getting little pitting. So to find one that doesn't have that pitting is very, very rare. You also have to be careful, I'll give you a little tip. Um, you have to be careful that they're not re-blued because, because of the pin pricking, um, some collectors will send them out, have them re-blued, and of course that hurts the price. Let me show you uh, real quickly uh, the best way to tell whether or not something has been re-blued. If you look at the front strap, and this is, this is not, uh, you know, this is just a, a warning sign that it might be re-blued, but look for the little kanji mark on the front strap. 
Uh, the reason being is that's very thin, very lightly on there. So anytime they re-blue something to get rid of the pitting, first they buff it all off, get all the pitting off. And in the buffing process, that usually gets removed. So you want to look for that little kanji writing, um, and then you, it's more likely that it's original finish. But you have to be careful because they are almost never found in this nice a condition. These were, uh, these were also issued with two magazines and the holster, which I've, I've talked about. The magazines are nickel and they are numbered on the back of the spine. They would come, this one has one matching mag. I'll show you one in a little bit that has two matching mags. Uh, very hard to find with two matching mags and two matching mags can almost double the price as opposed to a non-matching. These magazines are very rare. They do make uh, replicas. Uh, so that you can, if you wanted to go out and shoot it, I wouldn't use your original because this magazine alone, if you want a spare mag, if you're missing the mag, magazine alone can be $1,200. So I, I went looking for a magazine. I found out the hard way how expensive they are. This comes with a matching mag and the grips were numbered to the gun. And you can see that on the inside of the grip, they were numbered to the gun. Um, and the way they fire is pretty simple. They do have a, a grip safety and when they're cocked, Decocking, pull that out. It works a lot like the, the Mausers that, that I'm familiar with. Uh, that's the baby Nambu. Now, let me show you something even more. If you're not excited now, I'm gonna show you something even more exciting. Are you excited? Okay, the big reveal. Check this out. Looks like a standard baby Nambu, but it's not a standard baby Nambu. First of all, it's got the straps intact. Very unusual. It's got the soft shell, not the hard shell, but it, it should be soft shell because it's a later gun, not, not among the first five or 600. Um, so we open it up. Oh, there's a baby, Nam baby Nambu in here. But first, let's look under this flap. This is how I bought it, by the way. All of this came together uh, when I bought it, and this one's in my safe. Uh, never offered for sale because I just I, I don't collect ba uh, Nambu stuff, but this one just turns me on. Look at the inside of that. All the rounds are still in there. Oh my gosh! At 50 bucks a piece, you do the math, right there. Um, all original baby Nambu rounds, but it gets even better than that. We open it up. We pull out a Tokyo Arsenal baby Nambu, superb finish. But look at this. I don't speak Japanese, but the kanji writing is Imperial Gift or Gift from the Emperor. Now, if you know anything about the Emperor, he was revered as a god. And so you never met, nobody ever met the Emperor. In fact, the first time they heard the Emperor's voice um, at the end of World War II was when the Emperor spoke and uh, was announcing that they were surrendering. That's the first time they even heard his voice, let alone meet the Emperor. And certainly the Emperor would not have presented this. But one of the emperor's minions, um, the emperor ordered these and they were giving out to special cadets, special officers who had done something really phenomenal. Uh, we're not sure what that is. Maybe they gave money to the war college. I don't know. Uh, but they were, um, they were given this special imperial gift from the emperor. So um, this one is extremely rare. Again, only 14 known in collector's hands. Now it also comes with, if remember when we look down inside here, there's little surprises. We already know about the cleaning rod and that one is like brand spank me new. And then there's, <laughs> then there's another uh, magazine down in there. Let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, check this out. Two matching mags in incredible condition, two matching mags. Um, let's take a look at this again. It fits down inside here. If you look, you, all you do is put it down in here. And by the way, this is the same way the Type 14. If you have a holster for a Type 14, the spare mag goes in here, the gun goes in here, and then it closes, closes down like that. So cool. So glad I could show that to you today. And even though I'm not a Japanese collector, I just love the uh, workmanship of this particular piece. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe because we're coming at you with a lot more. If you're like me and you can't get enough of this stuff, click here to subscribe. That way we'll send you notification when we do something new or click one of these buttons for recommended videos.